Hi guys, welcome along. Uh, part 11 now of this build of this lovely Hong Kong models A20G in 132nd scale. So, um, in part 10 if you remember we put the turret to one side because I don't have the bullets yet. Gas patch are, are sending me some. I believe they're sending them today. Today is the 16th of November 2023 so um, hopefully within the week I'll have those so we can get the turret done. Um, they're also sending me a little guns as well and some other bits and pieces so Keep your eyes peeled, there'll be a lot of gas patch reviews coming up. Um, so, uh, we did the Bombay we did the Bombay roof as part of a tutorial for a, for a beginner's video. And then we worked on this panel here. Got that all done. So that's all very nice. I need to check my references actually and see if these two holes need to be drilled through. And if these indeed here are holes. Because on the back side of the plastic, if you remember, there was an indentation where they are. Um, and those holes went right through on the on the original part. So we'll have a look at our references, and if they are, then we'll drill them through the brass. Obviously, we'll check to see that they're not going to come. You know, they're not going to be anywhere near the uh, the the ribs. So that's okay. So we shall see about that and, uh, and go from there. Um, so that's all good, right? So they're done out of the way. Now we're moving on to these side walls, and as you can see from the instructions here, we've got all these panels going in. And here's one here. So we've got, this is number 23, as you can see, I've got it marked up. So all these panels are going in. And when they fit, obviously, they're going to be just, you're just going to get a blank hole. Now, I did explain before, but I'll say it again. In reality, what these are is a sheet of aluminium with plunged holes. So you can see they've got, Edward, I've got the, um, the edges raised because they're, they're plunged to give them, give them rigidity. Um, it also makes them lighter. And then they have a folded over edge. So basically when you look at an end on like that, they're like an L shape. So you get a, a nice sort of thick wall down one side. But basically what obviously Hong Kong models have done because of the restrictions of moulding, they've had to mould this is like, I think it's about a millimetre thick. Um, yeah, it's a millimetre thick. So they could have made it much thinner, I expect, and then we'd have had warping and all sorts of problems. But... Um, so basically, if, if we fit those on like that, what we will have is, is just, you're just going to be looking at a blank. It'll just, well, I'll turn it over. It'll be, look, it'll, it'll be like looking at that rather than having a hole. Um, if you remember, I also opened up these holes on the, on the bottom and there's the, the chamfered back of them. So it's going to be nice to have all these holes open. There's also these pieces here. Okay, so we can see these four pieces here. These go along the top. Here, so there's going to be loads of holes up there as well. So it's going to be absolutely full of holes, and it's just going to look great. It's going to look really, really nice. So what I'm having to do is drill, I'm making these holes in here. You can see I've got that opened up. Where's my knife? I've got a little bit of flash in there. I want to get rid of. There we go. So what happens now is instead of just having a blank piece of plastic behind it, we've actually got a hole. Okay. So when you look through you will see you can see straight through to the other side um what i need to do is get a light behind it or something so i can show you isn't it okay so we've got a torch now so you can see when you look through you'll see it's holes so and then when you look at it through this side you'll see the light coming through or not however the case may be the camera's sort of compensating for the light but uh yeah, it's, um, it's good. You can see there when I put the light and change the light away, you can see you can look right through. So what we've got to do is actually drill holes right the way through. There is a very handy point to all this. If you look at these here, I think these are all one side and these are all the other. And if we take a straight edge, this this is the this is the top edge here. So this edge here is butting up against there. OK, and if we put a straight edge across, we can see, so I just hit the camera in my head, we can see we have a straight line. So on all those holes, which is really good. These go off a little bit. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the round holes certainly are all in a straight line, which is great. So what we're able to do is just drill. What I've done is taken this one off the fret, mark the centres of the holes and then drilled them out. And then with this, I think this is a three millimetre drill. I can go all the way in and drill out all those holes. Now, 
I also I also have here a where's it gone? There's some in a bag. I don't have one loose for some reason. It's gone. There it is. Um, I have these one and a half mil drills, so we can also go in with those and just drill through, and we can reach through and get them as well. And then we'll do the same and come in from the other side. And then for these square holes down here, I have this little my um, Genor tool that I had the brown one blew up. Well, just the battery went, I think. So I bought a new one on Amazon. It I think it was about seventeen quid, and. Uh, Great little tool, it's not too fast. If you want to slow it down a bit, you can. You just put your finger on there and slow it down. But um, we can get in there and, and grind away and, and make all the holes so we don't see it. And then I think what I'll have to do afterwards is paint this matte black before we put the photo etch on, and then you won't see anything in there. Is it accurate? No, it should, it should just be one single skin. So if you want to, if you really want to go to town, you could cut all these ribs out and completely replace them with one piece of photo etch because the way they've got this as you can see what this PCO 24 is going on the back of that rib and 23 is going on the front so you're sandwiching it so you're making a one a one millimeter thick sandwich um, which is not strictly accurate it should be just one single sheet with a folded edge but hey ho it's gonna look great um, you know the more holes we have and everything now you can see I'm doing all this work here on this rib and if we put this floor in for the fuel tank we are going to lose a lot of that detail you've got another one there look so you're not going to see a lot so I think I'm going to probably leave them out and cut away these lugs here and just have an empty bomb bay there'll be no bomb racks or anything in there perhaps just put these bomb racks here and have them across so we've got something in there but um, we shall see uh, I, I don't think anybody could say that what you've done is right, wrong or whatever, because speaking to Mark Postlethwaite, it would appear that there is a lot of jiggery pokery going on with fuel tanks and where they are, if they're in the wings or if they're in the bomb bay or whatever, or what, what, you know, what the aircraft was doing at the time. But um, we'll have a look. Maybe we'll cut these legs off and have nothing in there at all. We'll see what the bomb racks look like, because the kit has these here so you've got this part l7 l8 and then you've got four of these um hangers there and you can see the bombs going so we'll see what that's like if that's all a bit chunky because this is all going to make it look very very sort of delicate and fine um i may just i may just leave all of it out i mean the, the reference pictures i've got online um of a restored aircraft there is nothing in the bombay at all there's no no racks none of this flooring here None of those racks, no bombs, nothing. So it could just be a display aircraft, couldn't it? It could be being worked on. I, I don't know. It could be anything. But uh, it's it's a model at the end of the day. So, you know, I'm not going to paint the, the uh, Bombay pink. But uh, if it's got nothing in there, but it looks just full of cram detail, then it's going to look great, isn't it? Okay, so this is literally like six hours. I've been doing this for about five or six hours, pretty much non-stop crazy so uh you can see there's not much of it left so i'm just going to show you first of all if you remember uh we had this hole and there's a piece that goes in there this piece here f15 that's like a bulkhead that leads into the back um into the radio area so it's probably a stiffener or something um so obviously there's a hole through there so if you glue that in afterwards and you're going to end up with a lump in there anyway. So what I've done, um, got a piece of one mil square plastic, because this is this sort of cross member thing here is one millimeter high, one millimeter wide. Um, so there's a piece of one millimeter square plastic in there. I think it was three point seven mil long. And then because the actual, I've just had a packet of Chris, and I'm picking up my model. What a stupid person! Um, you should never do that. Um, so then I've got a piece of five thou card. Which, which, is, which I've cut to exactly fit in and then just plonk that in. So I've still got like a recess to put that part in, although it's got a shorter tab. But now we have all that blocked off and I've just put some of the black thin super glue in there to glue it to the brass and to, um, and to fill in any gaps. So now that it's dry, I should be able to just come in and... In fact, what I'm going to try and do is sand it. Maybe we can... My little bit of <clears throat> this little bit of skinny stick. These little pieces are really handy with the ends cut off to an angle. Now we can just sand that out 
like so. So that's that taken care of, and that should be absolutely fine. As I say, it's going to be right down in the Bombay. Bombay. Right, let me go and wash my hands before I touch anything else. Okay, so we're back. Right, so that's that better. I've got to remember to clean the back of that off with alcohol. Now I've got oily finger marks all over it. Um, so, this is what I've done. You can see you can see through it. It's full of holes. All up the top here, you can see there's all holes. If you compare it to the... As, as that... Well, it's not out of the box part because I've done these here. Um, but you can see the difference. And it sort of looks... It looks a lot more busy, doesn't it? Even with the rough old holes there, it just looks more detailed. But you can see like here, when we put this, when we put this panel in here on the top, um, you can see the effect. And you've got these, when you're looking up into the Bombay, you're going to be able to see through there. It's just going to make it all look a lot busier. I've decided I've bent that one, I need to sort that out. Um, I've decided I'm not going to put those floors in because they block off most of the bomb bin. I might not even put any bombs in, I might just have it completely empty, which means I'll also have to cut off these lumps here. These lumps here locate the um, the cross members. I've cut through that tube, that tube was obviously moulded on it like a solid piece. Uh, so I've cut through there to make that look a bit hollow, although you can't really see any of it. Um, and we've got these little bits like um, here. This is a I think this is a 21. No, it's not. What's this one then? This is a 90. Um, so this one, which my tweezers gone? They're over here. This one, I think, will go in here. So we can see in there that we've now got that sort of that thin aluminium with the punched out holes. You can also see up there, same thing again. So all the rough, all the rough gouged out holes will all appear as being nice little um, aluminium fabricated parts. So you can see that one there is going to fit in there, just like so. You can see through it. So that's all good. So I've got to get all the rest of the parts off the fret, get them all sanded down on the backs, all cleaned up, and then we'll start getting some glued in. But um, yeah, I'm really, uh, really pleased with how it's looking. Um, I still haven't done my research to check if those holes need to be drilled in there. But uh, yeah, and I've got this this one here. You can see I've been pushing this about. And I've managed to damage it a bit, but that's okay. Once it's got some matte green paint on it, it won't show. It's only showing because it's reflective. But yeah, that's... um. We're now, what are we? Uh, 13 minutes into the video, and it's about seven eight hours work there but with this as well it's about 12 hours work so lots and lots of work but well worth it because i think the end, it, it finished effect so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go around i'm, I'm not going to spray i'm going to brush paint uh, in, in all these holes <clears throat> so that when you look through the edge you don't see the gray plastic um and then i get all the photo etch glued on and then we get it all black primed and then maybe do some um pre-shading with a, with a white or something and then spray it all uh, see how it looks and then we can do a comparison of how it looks with that one so that'll be interesting to see so you'll see how it comes out of the box and how it comes with with all this work done and you could decide for yourself then whether it's worth it uh, when i do the jk i'll probably do it out of the box i might even do the bomb bombay doors shut <laughs> we shall see right let's get on with it okay, here we are a few hours later you may detect in my voice i've got a stinking cold so if I'm sniffing and stuff, I'm sorry, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, really stinking cold. Um, and it's really annoying because my eyes are running all the time and I can't really see what I'm doing. So I'm having to do everything through a magnifier. But here we can see I've added, you can see the photo etch fret is starting to look a bit more sparse now across here. So I've added all these vertical members. They all fit beautifully. It's really, really nice. There's only a couple, um, I think there's two or three where you've got this sort of run of tubes or whatever they are um, and all I've done is got a knife and just the, the, the etch is not cut away enough so I've just got a knife and just made a slit in the in, so that the etch actually slots into the pipes but um, there we go so we can see there that is looking a lot better than 
the standard kit part okay you can see the difference however <laughs> You know, if you're going to go accurate, I've been doing some research and it looks like everything from DO20 on would have had these um, Bombay mounted fuel tanks. So if you if you want accuracy, you're going to have to fit these these floors in place. Hang on a second, that won't go in there. That needs to be trimmed. The photo etch is just enough to stick out and keep it away. But basically... You know, you're hiding all that up there for a start, and then the, the lovely work you've done on the bulkhead, that's all going to disappear because that's all going up behind that door as well. So, you know, you may decide to leave the floor out or put it in or whatever. Depends if you want a model that looks good when you look up in the Bombay or if you want accuracy. We shall see. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm really sorry that this part of the video is kind of... I know a lot of people out there put videos out <coughs> and it's kind of, you know, here we are. Here's the photo etch. This is what I've done. There we go. Job done. Um, and I know this is a bit like that. It's because it's quite boring for you to have to watch the uh, the actual photo etch going on. So I'm going to try and do a little bit um, with you on camera. So um, we've got, we've sort of done all this now. So now we're moving down to this part down here. So fold that in half and we've got little bits and pieces going on we've got some folding to do to go underneath there but these these big pieces go in the top so what I'm going to do here is grab this one and this is going to fall up into that area there like so and it fits over the photo etch as you can see and I mean, when you look at that compared to the kit part, you know, it's a massive difference. It looks really, really nice. But again, it only looks really nice if you're going to be staring up into your Bombay. So what I'm going to do here is see if I can peg that in place to keep that end in position. That seems to work. And then on this end, what we can do, I've got thin super glue here. I'm just going to put some super glue in from the back, and hopefully, that will capillary around and hold it in place. That appears to be doing the job. So just grab a cotton bud. That has the effect of mopping up any excess glue and it also pushes the part into place. So there we go. Honestly, I can hardly see where I'm putting this glue. My eyes are streaming. I think I'm going to have to have a couple of days off modelling, which means you might not get a video for a day or two. We shall see. Okay, so that's that one done. We'll take that peg off of there. Get some glue into there and let that capillary under. And the same up there. My finger's stuck to it. There we go, and this is the this is the VMS <coughs> Flexi 5KCA XT thin. It's very very thin. I don't know if you can see in the bottle there. No, you can't. It's very very thin, um, and it it sets very very fast. And because it's thin, it capillaries in really well, and it really pulls back. So if you get any excess anywhere, it's sort of practically disappears it's very very good stuff and it's quite flexible but I have found a bit of a disadvantage with having these flexible super glues is when you get a build up of glue on the top with normal super glue I come along with a pair of pliers and just gently squeeze 
and the glue just cracks off it just falls away but because this stuff is flexible it doesn't do that so you have to kind of cut it away but, um, there we are so that's that one in place so you've actually seen me do some work now rather than just you know this is what I did earlier oh the other thing in here these pipes here get in the way so what I've done is come in with a knife and actually cut a groove into them cut a groove into the upper side so the PE can sort of slot down you can see there the PE is slotted down behind it but as I say when you compare when you compare the kit plastic to that you know it's, it does make quite a difference when you look up in the bomb bay it's going to look a lot nicer okay so I'll get that one glued in and then I've got some bits and pieces to do so I'll get that done and then I'll come back so finally we've got one side complete and <clears throat> a couple of things to note obviously as I say these are supposed to be pieces of single sheet metal aluminium um, so here on these parts here the instructions are asking you to put a piece on top as well well you're never going to see that way once the bomb is closed up you're only, you're only ever going to see that so I would rather leave that as a single piece rather than double up um, and have it more, you know, just looking more accurate like this does up here. I've also noticed uh, here and here I can see the plastic behind. So I'm going to have to get in there and carve some of that plastic away. Um, or not, as the case may be. Um, I can't see my knife. There it is. I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get in there actually very neatly. But, uh, it's all got to be painted black again from behind. The only reason I did it black in the first place before I did the um, the photo etch was so that I could uh, get in, in between these and want to be black. So when you look in there, when you look in there, you don't see grey plastic. Um, I've run over the front of all these with super glue and then I'm going to sand them all down and use the super glue as a filler. I'll move on to the black now um, so that we get like a nice, it doesn't look like two pieces of photo etch stuck to a piece of plastic. I want it to look like a single piece. Um, little door on the front of there. We've got a little disc there uh, there's these pieces here one two three four five they sit there absolutely pointless because when you look up underneath you're never going to see them but uh, they're there nonetheless um, so yeah all in all really happy with how that looks and when you compare it to the <coughs> excuse me when you compare it to the plastic out of the box it does look a bit more interesting um, you know, especially in that upper area but then, like I say, you're just going to be covering it all up. So we shall see what we'll do. Um, I haven't taken those lugs out yet. If I, if I don't decide not to put those pieces in, I will actually cut those lugs out, even though you're hardly going to see them. But uh, you can see here, I'm not sure which way around this goes, but uh, there we go. You can see when, when we pop that in there, you know, it's it's quite uh, it's quite a difference just having, than just having plastic in there. So very nice indeed. The other thing to note is these here, these are parts two and three. They've gotten the wrong way around on the instructions. Um, the numbering's the wrong way around. You can see they're, they're opposite. They're, one's bending to the left and one's bending to the right. So they're a little sort of fabrication and you can see I've soldered them. So I thought I'd end up this video and do a little bit of, um, bit of fabrication and soldering for you because the, the lesser experienced modelers out there, I know a lot of you are scared of photo etch and there's really nothing to be scared of. So what I've got here is a pair of Tamiya bending pliers. You don't need to get these. You could actually just use pliers like this. But um, I'm using these because I've got them and they've got a nice flat end on them. So what I'm going to do is start on the one furthest away from me. And when we look at this, what, what we're doing, we're going to make that there out of this piece of photo etch. OK, you can see it's got all those folded up ribs on it. So... If you look on here, you can see bolt heads, okay, or rivet heads, and we're going to fold up towards them. So I'm going to hold the furthest one away from me, nice and tightly in the bending pliers, and then bend that one up. It doesn't need to be perfectly 90 degrees at this stage. And I'm going to come on to the next one. Now you can see why I went the one furthest away from me. Bend that one up. Okay. <coughs> excuse me and then this one here there we go and 
and we can come over there. Look at that, they stayed absolutely straight. So with them like that, it's very difficult to say. I, I, I could zoom you in a bit. I'll zoom you in a little bit. I don't want to zoom you in too much because we lose my depth of field and everything goes out of focus easily. As Steve told me. Thank you, Steve. Um, so I'm looking at this and basically I want it to all be straight. Okay, so I want it all to be nice and straight. It doesn't need to be perfect, to be honest, from what you can see of it. So I can just get one of my modified clamps here. I'm just looking at it, making sure it's staying straight. Yes, it is. So I can go in like that. And then I'm going to take some liquid flux. And I want that to capillary all the way under there. Then I should take my soldering iron, just clean the end off. Tiny little drop of solder on the end of it. And then I'm hoping this is staying in focus, guys. I'm just going to literally tap, tap, tap. And I'm going to clean the solder off the iron and then use the iron as a heat source just to make that solder capillary underneath those bits. And there we go. And you can see there, there's hardly any solder at all. So I'm going to zoom you back out. Okay. And I'm just going to check. I mean, they don't need, you don't need to try and, try and break them off, but I'm just checking they are actually stuck down. And then with a the diamond file, those of you that have been saying I should get some Tamiya files, I do use files. I just rather use sanding sticks to take the sprue nibs off my PE. These are the Infini taper files. These are the small ones, and then there's the wider ones you can get as well. Um, they're absolutely awesome, and this is the super fine, the finest of them all. And it's wonderful for just removing any excess solder in here. Just like so. I want to cough. There we go. Cough done. Right, so now... We can look at it and we can hold these in the end of our bending pliers and we can see that that is not sitting in 90 degrees so we can just give it a tweak. We can hold that one because it's not in 90 degrees so just give it a tweak and then that one the same, give it a tweak. We can get them more 90 degrees and there we go and then we can just, that's ready to glue into the next one. So I'll make those so I don't have to get the solder and iron out again and uh, there we go. So that is just going to go into there, just like that, and sit in there. Oh, the other thing we've got to do is on the front edge, if you look at these closely, you can see the back edge is square, the front edge is, is chamfered. You can see on the other back edge here is square, and the front edge has a chamfer. So what I'm going to do is hold this in my tweezers like so, and then with the sanding stick, just run down, just to make sure they all get cleaned up. And they're ready to go. So I'm going to make the other one, um, so I don't have to get the solder on it again. And I'm going to get this other side done, off camera, and uh, I guess we'll come back. What we know, well, we'll have to come back, we're only about half an hour. So I'll come back after I've done that and we'll see how it all looks when it's all slotted together. And I'm back prematurely. Um, this panel on here, we've got this rear piece here, E8, which is this piece here. And we've got to put in these two bits of photo etch, 13 and 87. Here's 87, that's off and ready to go. The back is all sanded out and I flattened it out. When it, when it came off the fret, it was um, kind of all curled up. So all I've done is gone over it like this and just on a fairly hard bench and that just gets it flat so it only needs to be flattish it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect now this panel here this panel is cut 
where are my tweezers gone the road over here I'm starting to clear up um, this panel here is cut so that it fits perfectly in between the side walls of the of the bomb bay and it does fit perfectly I mean I, there is no movement in it whatsoever but there's a bit of up and down but there's no um there's no side to side at all it's perfect so I thought I'd show you how I'm going to fit this to make sure it fits because what they're telling you to do here is just fit it onto the rear bulkhead but I wouldn't do that I'd actually get, get I've got it all taped together so what I'm going to do is just get this to move out a little bit here okay and I'm going to grab <coughs> Mr Unprepared I'm going to grab some PE adhesive and this is slow PE adhesive cyanacridate flexi 5k this is slow so I'll have plenty of time to work with it I'm just going to squeeze some of that on there don't need a load of it and then I can come along <laughs> I am Mr Unprepared I'm just going to use my cigarette lighter to clean off the end of the there we go that's that cleaned get off the end of the glue looper and then what I can do is get some of this this CA down into the gap you can see what I'm doing I just want to get some CA down into there now you can see why I'm using the slow Okay, and then just wipe the excess off of there then just pull it back and then I'm going to get a couple of my specialty pegs on here there we are so we know that's in the now so that could just be left to dry and while we're here I mean look at this if you look in there okay there's the plastic bombay with nothing in it Obviously, I've drilled all these holes out here, as you know, which I've said about a million times. But if you compare that to that, it does look a lot better. Than, there's a lot more there to look at. You've got the holes here. You know, it's um, when you compare it, 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 it's worth doing. Although, as I say, how much of it you see is... Uh, is um, <laughs> You know, if you put those, put the bombs in on those floors, you're not going to see any of it at all. <laughs> all you're going to see is this bit here. So, I don't know. The thing is, I really enjoy working with photo etch. I know it sounds crazy, but I really do. And I love things like this where you make holes. Um, I've learned my lesson with these, these bits up here. Uh, I need to make, I need to draw the holes further over, further towards the inside. Um... Sorry, for, yeah, further towards the inside. So uh, I've learned that lesson now. I didn't mark them well enough. But uh, there we go. Right. So we'll leave that to dry. And then once that's dry, we'll take it apart. We can fit this one in then and probably do the same thing again. Put it all together first to make sure it's all lining up. Because those cutouts are designed to go around these gussets here. So there we go. In fact, I can do that now, can't I? What I'll do is I'll take that away from there, and I should be able to if I take that away from there. I should be able to pull that out. Again, I've sanded all the, the plastic as well to get it roughed up to get a key. There's a hair in there. So we just drop that in there. Bring this one across, tape it together, just like so, and as you can see, it fits in there beautifully. Now I think the way this was designed was I think, I don't think I'll be able to move this now, I have a feeling that this piece here was designed to go underneath that one. I was worried about pushing this up and having an effect with fit into the fuselage because I can feel a slightly raised edge on there. So what I'm going to do is 
take it out with a sanding stick just going to remove some material from the back and I can move some material from the front as well and that should make it fit what I'll do is take that off of there it should make it fit a lot nicer so I don't have that step at the front There we go, that's much better. Right, so we can plop this back on. That's gone on like that, that's gone on like that, and then we're going to put the roof into there, like that. So that's that all held together. Okay, and then that can drop down so we can can do now is get some of this slow glue put it in here we don't need much it's just it's just to get it sort of tacked in place and then we're going to run thin glue in afterwards we can line that we do have a bit of movement in there side to side there we go so that's that in place all very nice isn't it all looking better than the plastic i wasn't actually going to fit this part here because the plastic is has got quite a nice raised section on it but i noticed in my references this blanking piece here at the bottom is quite prominent on the real thing and it's not actually molded on the on the kit so i decided to use it in the end but at the end of the day i mean how much of this stuff are you ever going to see you're, you're going to put it on a shelf and uh, I do it for the fun of building because I really enjoy doing it so that's how to do that or how I've done it it's not how to do it it's one of the ways to do it but it's how I've done it right so now we can see in there we've got some additional detail now at the back and then when the front bulkhead goes on <coughs> excuse me like so we can see that uh, it's all looking good so there we go right back in a minute and there we are uh, done um, the cold isn't done but uh, this is done and as you can see I've gone around the edges with black super glue and basically just put it over the top and then what I'll do, I'll keep doing that until the brass disappears and then I'll sand it all flat and then we'll have that nice flush look on the front. Is it worth doing? Um, I think if you're having your Bombay empty, certainly these bits up here, I think they make the biggest difference with the holes. Um, if you're having your Bombay empty, then I think yes, 100%, it's definitely worth doing. Um, if you're, if you're going to be putting all these panels in, as you can see here, you know, you've got that panel there, and then you've got a bulkhead going in there. Uh, you've got a bulkhead going in there, and then you've got a panel going in there, which I think the photo edge gets in the way. We just need to trim a slight bit off of there. But that's going to sit in there like that. So as you can see, and then when you've got your central bulkhead in, uh, I'm not sure which way around it goes, but whatever, it's in there. So it's going to sit like that in there. When you look up in your Bombay, um, you know, you're only going to see these bits here, and if you put bombs in there, you're going to see hardly any of it because the bombs will go across where my fingers are now. So, is it worth doing? It depends if you're going to be looking in your Bombay or not. You can leave these out. Um, leave those out. Leave those out. And you have to have this one. This is part of the uh, part of the aircraft. But uh, leave everything out. Don't put any bombs in it and just have an empty Bombay. Um, and it will look, that's how it will look. It will look great. Um, it does look really nice. Actually, when you look at it um, like that, when you put the top on, put the roof on, it does look very nice indeed. I can get the roof to go on. There we are. As you can see, all that detail up in there, it does look lovely. Those holes at the top, I think, make a hell of a difference. 
it really do make the difference to uh, to what you're going to see. Um, you know, when you start looking out from different angles and you can see all those vertical members and everything in there, it really does make it pop. And also drilling these holes out. So, would I do it again? Probably. Um, me, I don't know. We shall see. But uh, it's certainly um, it's certainly a lot of fun. If you enjoy working with Photo Etch, oh, sorry, cough there. If you enjoy working with Photo Etch, or if you just you know need the practice, then what better way to go to about it than uh, than doing this? You don't need to drill those holes like I did. You can just leave them blank. In fact. This is actually a good example of not working when you feel under the weather, um, not working on models. I messed up here. I didn't drill through there on that panel because there's no hole in this side. I didn't drill through there and there's, there's, you can see in there there's a blank panel. And also um, here I didn't drill through. So I've drilled through after I've put the brass in and then I've damaged the brass. So yeah, it's... Um, not good to be working on your uh, when you feel down and also this one here remember i said one side's angled one side's flat the flat always goes to the back i put it in with the flat at the front so yeah i had to cut that out and start again i must say this vms uh, glue is very very good i really had a trouble getting that out of there so uh yeah this ain't going nowhere but it's um it's lovely really happy with how it's come out and uh i think they look smashing and the rear bulkheads there with those panels on so you can see once that goes in that makes quite a nice little difference to everything as well you can see that panel in there and um let's see you got the middle, middle bulkhead as well that makes a big difference that lovely sheet on there i did throw the holes through they are supposed to be holes um edward missed them out i guess to whatever so there we are As I say, would I do it again? I don't know. Um, I will be having the J kit arrive soon. So we'll see if I do it on that. But uh, we shall see. We shall see. But uh, I think it's worth. I think it's worth the time and effort. We'll see what it all looks like when it's all painted and everything. So uh, thank you for watching. I will see you all again for part 12. Where I will have this all sanded and painted. Um, I've also got guns to go in the upper turret from gas patch models. I'm waiting for the bullets still to, or the rounds, should I say, still to come for the 50 cals. Um, and I'm also tempted to make those bits that go over the top. You know, the um, there's those pieces that are so prominent. I'm going to actually write to Edward and ask them to include it when they do the J. It'd be a simple piece of photo etch brass, roll it, and that'll be it. Stick it to your guns. Here you go. This is what I'm talking about. It's these pieces here go up over the top. You can see them there as well. They're sort of, um, they're, they're dust shields, they're, they're dust shields, draft, draft seals, because obviously you've got slots in the perspex um, for the guns to go up and down. So in this case, when your guns are down, you're going to have nothing there. So um, it's just going to be a case of making up some radius bits of brass, painting them black, either sticking them on the inside of the, the glazing or, um, or stick them to the top of your guns or whatever, but they're, they're very prominent on the real thing. You can see them there. So I'm going to make those, I think, out of some strips of brass. As I say, I'm going to ask Edward to add them to their um, to their JK kit when they do it. Right, so uh, I will see you all soon for part 12. Thank you for watching and um, have fun. Enjoy your modelling and go buy a kit and sit down and do it. And if you get a cold, don't work on a nice one like I've just done. <laughs> Bye for now.